Do you know the secret to having a bountiful garden without a lot of work? Hi, I'm Kenny. I'm Christy. And, and we're, we're the Prominent Preppers. Preppers. High yields of organic fruits and vegetables with very little labor are a hobby gardener's dream. Biointensive gardening is a great way to produce a lot of food with very little land. Growing as much food as you can on your own property greatly reduces financial stress on your family. In this video, we are going to share with you some tips to help you have a successful vegetable garden. And hey, if that means less feeding for us, we are totally fine with that. What a great time of year this is. The opportunity to get out in nature and grow a garden. It's just an amazing thing to do. And we're here to help you have a successful victory garden. Back in 1943, there were 20 million victory gardens in the United States. This was during World War II. And these victory gardens produced 40% of all the vegetables in the nation. It did an amazing job of boosting morale and providing good nutrient foods for families to keep people healthy. Unfortunately, by 1946, most of these gardens had gone away, and at least part of that was because the gardening methods that people were using were just too labor-intensive and too difficult to do. It doesn't have to be that way. During this time of COVID-19, we are looking out and seeing financial challenges and health challenges. We think that we can provide you with some great secrets that will help your garden be sustainable every year and provide you with great nutrition and financial benefit. When it comes to a successful garden, design is everything. Select a location that is convenient for you. Today, when I was making some beans for lunch, I went out to my garden and I picked cilantro and chives and some oregano for my meal. If that garden had not been right outside my back door and it had been across the yard, I wouldn't have made the trip for three spices. So by locating the garden really close and accessible to your home, it means that you will tend it better and you will use it more often. The garden should be in a protected location. This is my kitchen garden and on one side is our home and on the other side we've planted a hedge of goji berries that protects it from the wind. And it's on the south side so it receives full sun which provides for optimal growth for garden vegetables. Your garden needs to be low maintenance so that it doesn't take up any more time than it has to. The more automatic systems you can put in place, for instance, drip irrigation, the better off you will be. And consider plant placement. We grow a lot of our garden vertically whenever possible. Jonathan has installed these cattle panel arches where we can grow cucumbers and beans and tomatoes up those which significantly frees up our precious garden space. And as much as possible, your garden should be self-sustaining. And we'll talk about a few ways to make it so. The best plan is to mimic nature. The forest is self-sustaining. Nobody is hauling in pesticides and loads of fertilizers in order to sustain that. The forest itself is designed in such a way that for hundreds and thousands of years, it is self-sustaining. The biggest secret for a successful victory garden is healthy soil that is rich in organic matter. When you start with healthy soil, you have strong, vigorous plants that are naturally resistant to pests and disease. That soil will retain moisture better, it drains well, it is oxygen rich, and it is full of life. One of the important things we want to do is to close the loop by creating compost. All of the wonderful organic matter that people often haul away can be turned into beautiful compost and that helps make this easy and successful. One example of this is our ability to turn our garden and kitchen waste into eggs from our chickens. We recycle kitchen waste, garden waste, old produce, old food storage, any of that goes to the chickens. When our grandkids come over we have to kind of keep retraining them because they're just so used to putting any unused food into the garbage can. We often have to retrain them to put that into the chicken bucket or the worm bucket and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. It's the best way to reduce waste and to increase productivity. Kitchen scraps make great worm food and the worms are incredible compost makers and they make this wonderful rich dark soil that's worm castings that is an amazing fertilizer for your beds. In our worm bucket we put anything like paper napkins or cardboard, um, pieces of paper or shreddings, and any kitchen scraps that generally the chickens don't like, for instance, orange peels. 
And our chickens have been a little bit rebellious lately, and I think they realize that a lot of this stuff's going to the worms now. They're a little ticked <laughs> off about that, but, you know, they'll get over it. We have been gardening for a very long time, and we produce a lot of food. But with all of the economic challenges that we see on the horizon, I had wanted to up my game. And there are a few things that I'd wanted to learn to do that I just hadn't got around to yet. And I've always been a fan of Tom Bartels and his gardening methods. And this spring he was offering 50% off of his Food Gardeners video workshop. And so Jonathan and I decided that we would sign up and see what we could learn. And this worm bin is a result of some of our dates when we watch the videos from that class. He uses a freezer. In this case, this is actually a refrigerator. And we've cut a hole in the bottom and put some hardware cloth over it so we've got some good airflow. But it's created this wonderful compost worm bin that can help us build the nutrients in our soil. Another way we are closing the loop is to compost all the green waste on our property. Every time we clean out the chicken coop, it goes into this compost bin. Also our grass and our leaves, anything like that, we put these in here and allow them to do their magic. Another important principle of a successful victory garden is to be able to extend that season. One simple way to do that is to make sure that you have a variety of crops. There are what we call cold weather crops and hot weather or warm weather crops. I can start peas early in February so that I get a, can get a jump on the garden. Some people think that you can't start your garden until Mother's Day when you can put in the warm weather crops such as tomatoes and peppers. However, by the time Mother's Day comes around, I've already had a wide variety of crops that we've harvested because we've planted it correctly. So we have a spring planting, a summer planting, and a fall planting, and that allows us to get a wider variety of crops in before the season changes and we just can't produce anything. This is a method called winter sown or a poor man's greenhouse. And we just take any type of transparent container, drill the appropriate holes in it and start our seedlings outdoors. And even though it's snowed, the seedlings are still safe and growing inside of these containers until it's safe for us to transplant them out into the open. If you click on the card in the corner, it'll take you to a post that we have written that will teach you exactly how to use this method. Another exciting thing we're doing this year is to start our seedlings indoors. We acquired some fairly inexpensive shop lights and with the correct bulbs, these plants are just thriving. Hey, why don't we leave in the link exactly what those bulbs are and where they can purchase them. Yeah. Another thing that you can do is use hot caps to protect your plants from freezing because a lot of times during the springtime we have this great weather and then we have a frost that's a killer frost. And if we can just protect these seedlings during that killer frost, it really helps us to be able to grow much more in a short growing season. This is a screenshot of Tom Bartell's class. It, it was a video on season extension and this is inside of one of the hoop houses that he has made. And as you can see, he's been able to produce a fantastic crop of greens very early in the season before most of us are planting our seeds. I don't have a greenhouse yet. So there comes a point in time where I just can't produce anything on my property because everything is covered in snow. And so it's been really important for me to learn how to preserve the harvest so that we can eat all winter long from our victory garden. One of the easiest ways to preserve food is just to dehydrate it. And some foods dehydrate better than others and are tastier than others. I love to dehydrate my herbs and spices, onions, celery, greens, peppers, squash, and fruit of almost all kinds. I guess the raspberries are kind of seedy, but apples and pears and peaches, things like that all turn out really good dried. For years, we have wanted to have some kind of a solar dryer or a solar dehydrator, but it wasn't until this year when we saw Tom Bartel's design that I really got excited. As an engineer, this is pretty cool and it really makes a lot of sense. This uses Simply Sunshine to dehydrate all this food. We are in the process of creating five of these. They won't be this big, they're half this size, but we're creating five of these because we have a lot of produce that we like to dry. And this year we plan to do a lot more drying and a little bit less bottling. So keep an eye out for future videos on how well this works for us, but Tom's design was actually brilliant. Home bottling or canning is a wonderful way to preserve the garden produce. And we have some specialty items that we do every year, such as tomatoes and salsa, pickles and bottled fruits. Um, grape juice is something that we do 
all the time. There are just some things that are spectacular that way, but you do have that initial investment of the bottles. You have new lids that you need to purchase and you need fuel, which makes home bottling a little bit more expensive than drying your food. Freeze drying is also a possibility for preserving your garden harvest. Freeze dried food is wonderful, but it is an expensive initial investment and you do need electricity to be able to preserve that food. Preserving some foods is as easy as putting them in a root cellar. This is a root cellar that we created out of an old freezer, so it cost us basically nothing, but it has done a great job. We generally put a lot of potatoes in there, but we also sometimes put some beets or onions um, or some other things in there. It just works really well. Probably my favorite way to preserve our harvest is to cover those root crops and let them just sit there all winter under the snow. In, the, in this picture, you can see that we pulled back these insulative bags of leaves and the garden underneath is still alive. There's still worms and all kinds of critters in there and our produce is just wonderful. And Tom's root cellar is even a little bit fancier than ours. He used galvanized culvert to create this underground wonderland where he can keep all of these crops and eat them all winter long. Another important secret to a successful victory garden is to make sure that you have a sustainable supply of seeds. That means that you need to be able to harvest your own. Start with open pollinated seeds and you need to really study and to learn about this because there are some seeds that you can just save, like these sunflower seeds, but there are other ones that need special treatment in order to save or that you need to keep from cross pollinating with something else. So take time and learn a little bit more about saving seeds. The seeds need to be dried, they need to be prepared and stored. And as long as you know how to do that, you will never have to buy seeds for your garden again. Tom Bartell's class does an amazing job of helping you understand a lot of this also. That's true, he did a really good section on that. The sweet success of a victory garden is just amazing. What a wonderful sight. That picture on the left shows our produce tray in our refrigerator and it is just full of all kinds of wonderful things and it just never stops until we get to the end of the harvest season but we have this wonderful supply of great foods. And then even when that harvest season is done though, then it's time to start pulling those bottles off the shelf of exactly all of those right. preserves that we made and, and the peppers that we've done. And it, it's just a wonderful, very satisfying process. It really is very satisfying. As Benjamin can attest to there on the right, this is a watermelon that we grew. Do you think he dropped it on purpose so he'd get to eat it? I think he did. Yeah, I think he did, think and he's so. thoroughly enjoying it. <laughs> we want to introduce you to our friend Tom Bartels. We've put a link in the description that will take you to a video that he created that is really cool. He'd really like to help you at this point grow a successful garden, especially as we have these economic challenges ahead of us. And the video that he's created walks you through some of the basic principles. It has this really cool method of planting carrot seeds. They're a little bit finicky, right? And sometimes you can't get them to sprout. And he's got this great method that he demonstrates along with some of his seed saving and how to use stuff and some basic gardening techniques. And it's just free for you to watch. So check out that link in the description. The training class that, that we are taking from Tom is called a Food Gardener's Video Workshop. And it has just really been a great opportunity for us to kind of up our game in our gardening because Tom has some great ideas that we've been able to mix with some of ours and we're excited to see how this season ends for us. Tom Bartels has written the post that this video is based on. It's entitled Biointensive Victory Gardens, Higher Yields with Less Work. And I think that's what we all really want. We hope that you'll check out this post. And talking about higher yields with less work, that's what we've created in our survival food forest. So we have this orchard where we use the chickens to take care of the weeds, to fertilize it, and in return, we get these fantastic eggs. And this whole setup is very sustainable and requires very little work on our part. So check out that video. And check out our cool, literally, root cellar ideas for some ways that you can preserve your harvest. In this, we have some really ingenious and inexpensive ideas to help you store your produce. Check them out. Biointensive organic gardening requires a bit of a mindset change. Traditional methods use pesticides and fertilizers. This uses compost, but once you get the hang of it, it'll change your life. And now for the question of the day. What experience do you have growing Victory Gardens? Do you think it'll make a difference in your family's diet this year? 
comment below. And, and thanks, thanks for being part of the solution. solution.